What's up everyone? Today we're talking about racks. When I was making videos about the build process, I kind of neglected talking about the rack. So in this video I want to go into as much detail as I can um, about this rack. Now it is a custom made rack for the Ford Transit Connect. Um, my dad's friend's a welder and so we kind of went over what would work, what wouldn't work, and what I needed. And when we first made the rack, I didn't have a fantastic uh, fan in the roof. So when I decided to cut the hole in the van for the fan, we had to pull the rack off and kind of modify it a little bit. So I'm gonna show you those modifications and kind of how the whole thing works. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna start by just taking around the perimeter of it. And first and foremost, the Ford Transit Connect, at least the 2010 version that I have, there are four mounting points. Um, I think right in here you can see this support. So there's one there and then opposite side over the driver's door. And then there's one right here. So we use those mounting points for these uh, two by two square tubes. There's one on each side here and here. And then so we just drilled a hole in the top side of the two by two and then it's you know, the, the nut goes through and then it anchors to the attaching point. And then here you can see to keep the, the rack level, there's a spacer in here, a steel spacer with some rubber uh, cushions. But yeah, so that's how it's all mounted up there. It's just four bolts, really. So around the front here is my sad attempt at an air dam. It's just plywood. It's nothing special, but it was just to try to block some of the wind noise or deflected, I guess, and some of the wind resistance. Only a couple stickers have, have held on Ambition Snow Skates, which you should check them out at ambitionsnowskates.com, and Bones Wheels, the two best. But yeah, so I just painted it black. Uh, I think it would look a little better if I rounded the corners, but I got lazy. So on top of the two two by two square tubes, I have some one by two square tube with these plates uh, that kind of cap the ends. And there's five of those. So one at the front, you can see a three in the middle, and then one right at the back. And you can see how they bridge across, especially at the back. So I just set them on top, and we just welded them in place. And then those tabs were designed to have a one by four for the sidewall. Originally when we made the rack, I didn't plan on putting the one by four boards like here on the, on the main platform. I had planned to just have the one by four kind of sidewall to kind of give it that basket look. There's one along the front as well, but that kind of got hidden when I made the air dam. So under here, you can kind of see some really small like one by one tube. Now that tube was used as a bridge between this cross support and between this cross support and this cross support. And that was to make room for my fantastic fan. So let's go up top and take a look. All right, so the first thing we'll talk about is the fantastic fan. You can see, obviously, the big cutout for this dome to rise up, and it just clears these uh, sides of the one by fours. I used to have a bigger gas tank, but someone decided that they needed it more than I did, so they took it, and once in a great while, it would slide over far enough, and it would kind of block my, uh, my lid from being able to open, but, since someone decided to take it, I had to get a smaller one, and now that doesn't happen anymore. So I guess uh, you suck and thank you at the same time. Next, my solar shower. Now, I just noticed as I got up here that it moved quite a bit. It's normally kind of more in line with the back strut here or this cross support. So I might have to slide it back a little bit, which I think it's not gonna be too hard. It's just up here with some straps I really wasn't so sure about this thing. I, it came from Walmart. It felt like it was gonna break. I'm too afraid to fill it full and hold it by the handle here. I pretty much carry this thing like a baby because I think it's gonna pop. I'm surprised it's lasted this long. But yeah, you can see I have two straps going this way and those go under like these three one by fours and I have one lengthwise that is going around this one strut here, this one cross support here. I do have a little bit of free space there but that's kind of left open so that I am able to get into the Thule. Sorry if I pronounced that the wrong way. And then my spare tire. I'll explain why that's up here. 
it's kind of a dumb long story, but uh, the first time I ever tried to leave for van life, I got rear-ended and it basically caved my bumper in. And on the Transit Connect, there is, when you open up each back door, there is a, like a great big Allen nut. And that's what you twist and that lowers your spare tire down because it, it's under the van uh, just behind the, the rear bumper. Well, it has like this long straight cable that when you twist, it lowers the tire down to the ground so then you can unhook this little mechanism and out comes your spare tire. Well, when I got hit, that straight cable turned into like an S shape and one time I needed to get my spare tire. I was twisting and twisting and twisting and grunting and grunting because it was so hard to turn that it snapped. The cable snapped or something. So I had to use the cable cutters, cut it out, and then just, you know, get the thing out of there. And I no longer had that spare tire mounting kind of system. Then when I redid the van this last time, I was able to get the back bumper stretched back uh, pretty far actually and that allowed me to get my rear doors to latch at the top and bottom, which they didn't used to after I had been hit. So now there is enough room for the tire, but since I broke that kind of mounting mechanism, I had to put my tire up here until I go find one that I'm willing to buy at a junkyard or some salvage yard or something. But for now, it'll stay up there. It kind of sucks having it up there because it makes it a little harder to get into this Thule, but I really don't have to get in there too much so for now I'm just gonna have to make do. So inside my Thule I keep um, lighting equipment and spare skateboards and tents and it is literally packed as full as I can possibly pack it. It's kind of a pain to open it and close it because it's so full that sometimes when I think it's locked it's not so I have to really double check. And then you can see here since I do have to have the spare tire up here None of this was planned, by the way, which is bad, but the spare tire just fit. It kind of pushes on the Thule a little bit, so this thing flexes, you know, pretty easy, so it's not the worst, but you kind of got to flex it down a little bit. The key uh, fits in there barely. Again, you got to do some flexing, but I don't have to go into this thing every day, and if that were the case, this tire would definitely not be up here. Because I would probably ask the same question, I'm going to give you guys the dimensions of the rack. Now, when I made it, I wanted the rack to be able to carry 4x8 sheets of plywood. So I took into consideration how thick the 1x4s were um, to give me a little bit of, you know, extra room. So between that 1x4 there and this one, we're at 48 and, you know, a half. So I have just a little bit of room to slide sheets of plywood up here. And then for length we have pretty much 78. If you want to get down to it, it's about 78 and 3 eighths. And that's about the max length that I wanted it. I didn't want it to go over my rear doors. And as you can see on the Transit Connect, the rear doors curve over. They don't just end um, and open. It definitely could extend back a little bit further. Um, you know, maybe a couple inches and it wouldn't interfere with anything. And then the front, I didn't want to get too far over um, because, you know, I don't know all that much about how wind noise works, um, but I didn't originally plan to have an air dam. And I didn't want this two by two squared tube to come out to here and have a huge kind of cavity for wind to get caught up in there because I thought it would make a lot of noise. It did still make a lot of noise, and I think it was mainly because of the, the 1x4 on the front here. Um, but instead of taking that off, I just, like I said, I built this air dam, and it does work pretty well. So hopefully that helped if you guys had any questions about the rack that I use. Um, again, it was a custom rack that was made for the van in Wisconsin. I don't know what steel prices are nationwide, but I had about 75 bucks in, in material. So round up to 100 bucks in material, and then thankfully it was a friend that welded it all, so the labor cost was pretty cheap. Um, but it's, it's such a simple, simple design. Like I said, it's just two... Uh, two by two square tubes and then five cross supports and those can be spaced out however you need them. I had one at each end and then the three in the middle and then I just put little metal tabs welded on as the caps and then those are my anchor points for my 
uh, one by fours. I was going for that basket look. I liked how that looked on a lot of vehicles, but they didn't really make a good one for the Ford Transit Connect, and they're really expensive. Um, a couple little things that I guess I did. I put silicone on all like the little joints to try to keep any moisture out of the, you know, inside the tubing. And then the sidewalls of the rack uh, are oak, and that's just a clear polyurethane on them. These, I just did pine because I, I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep these uh, for that long. And then I just stained them to match the oak sidewall ones. But yeah, these are definitely like so much cheaper and they're not gonna last nearly as long, but they're up there. So I tried to cover anything and everything I could think of, um, but if I missed anything or you guys have questions, just leave a comment below. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, share it, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.